Hi all, let's have a look at the round two game in the Bilbao Masters between Vallejo Pons and Vichy Anands. So Vallejo playing white. A bit of tidbit of information here from Wiki. Uh, Vallejo Pons, a grandmaster from Spain, was a child prodigy achieving the grandmaster title at the age of just 16 years and nine months, which made him the 20th youngest player to ever become a grandmaster. Okay, so he kicked off with d4, Vichy played knight f6, after c4, e6, so Vichy is in wanting the Nimza engine or the Queen's engine. We see knight f3, and then let's move d5, as though black's content with the Queen's gambit declines positions. After knight c3, you might think uh, the bishop is just wanting to go here, but actually the Rogozin system is played, so after the great player Rogozin, Bishop b4, so it's a kind of cross between a Nimza engine and a Queen's Gambit declined. It's got one main drawback that sometimes there's an annoying pin here when the bishop comes to g5. So that has to be addressed somehow, usually. Uh, white usually just takes on d5, and that's what's played, that's the main move. e takes, bishop g5, so this annoying pin. And now uh, Vichy played h6, after bishop h4. G5 is often played to break the pin here, but actually uh, Vichy keeps things uh, more with pieces now, with C5 actually, so refusing to use that G pawn here. So C5 putting pressure on D4. Uh, now white took on C5, and we see knight BD7, so a very interesting position where black's not using the move G5, there's pressure on c5 to regain the pawn. Uh, the most usual move here apparently is rook c1. In the game we see e3, that's another popular move. Queen a5, so it doesn't matter now because this knight's supporting this one. There's no doubling of the pawns in a horrible way. There's pressure on c3 uh, now as well, as well as knight e4 on the way potentially. So black it, with the Rogozin system is generating uh, these threats, these tactical opportunities early on. Uh, we see after rook c1, uh, the move knight e4 is played. Knight e4 does carry with it actually a technically a weakness of the last move that the d5 pawn is usually taken by players with white hair. Queen takes d5. Uh, this leads to very interesting variations uh, after takes white forfeits castling rights with king d1 and we get an interesting game here uh, with white having that bishop here after bishop c4 uh, things are about equal it's a, it's a very interesting position to uh, explore uh, you might think well the king's actually a bit shaky here it's not so easy for example like this and and then you know we've got a problem on f7 for example so complex variations result from queen takes d5 here uh, but actually, in this game, we don't see queen takes d5, we see bishop e2. And now uh, Vichy castled. And uh, here, again, there's an opportunity, uh, at least from an engine point of view, to take on d5. It's quite an unusual position now with taking on d5 here, out of my live book. Uh, this position, though, might be okay as well, uh, just about for white. So takes, for example, takes. And here, um, let's see, if white takes on, sorry, if black takes on c3, that's no good, nasty pin. But um, knight d takes c5, and things here seem about equal as well. So basically this queen takes d5 resource, I think, should be carefully considered for players white playing this position. Bishop e2 is interesting. Um, so after castling, we see castles instead. And now Vichy forcibly uh, actually virtually wins the exchange. He takes on c3, there's not too many options for white. Takes on c3 again. Okay. And here, uh, the queen's attacked. We see queen d2 pinning 
against the queen, but it's check now. Knight takes e2, queen takes e2, but there's a very good move available for black, uh, which does create imbalance in the position, though. It doesn't just straightforwardly win material here. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you five seconds to pause the video. So black to play, what would you play here to create imbalance? It's not exactly winning material in a clear, clear cut way. I think it still remains balanced, the position. Okay, Vichy played b6, introducing bishop a6, and also hitting the pawn, of course. So leaving white not uh, with not too many options here, uh, we see the move c6 being played. So white creates that passed pawn, but is offering the exchange up with bishop a6. Securing queen and rook. So quite dramatic, queen d1. Now here, uh, taking on f1 is bad uh, for black because of c takes d7. So still hitting the bishop. Uh, and if the bishop moves, then in this position, white is doing uh, very well actually with this dangerous pass pawn here. Bishop e7 is good. Uh, this this is very annoying. Uh, if we try and um, say uh, like this, this, this gets very, very annoying for black. Uh, there's a lot of pressure everywhere on the position. So actually, um, that's that's an interesting line after bishop a6, queen d1, uh, not taking on f1. Instead, uh, a great alternative to this, avoiding the complications, keeping things much more clear cut here, was played. Um, can you guess it? If I give you five seconds here, so you don't really want to immediately take that exchange because there's a dangerous pawn on d7. Okay, knight c5. It doesn't matter that the rook's moving. It's actually there's knight d3. Okay, so white now does take on d5. That d5 is there for the taking, so it's an exchange sack. Bishop takes, king takes. Uh, now here, white has a pawn for the exchange, though. Black has five pawns, white has an extra pawn, six pawns. So a pawn for the exchange and a dangerous c pawn. The engine suggests black might be slightly better here, though. We see rook a c8. Knight d4, that is a very fine place for the knight. Queen d2, queen c4, rook f e8. And now uh, Vallejo goes for the exchange of queens, keeping things quite simple with that seemingly very dangerous past pawn, but the exchange down. Rishi takes this, takes, and now carefully avoiding this bishop here. Uh, he wants to be able to attack this pawn somehow. This square has been taken as well. Um, so actually, he plays rook e5. Another idea, though, in this position uh, is the immediate forcing move g5 to try and get rid of that bishop as it might be defending the c pawn on c7. So knight e4 here. Apparently, this is this is quite good. Black from an engine point of view. If bishop d6, we just take that. So the bishop hasn't got any squares here to use. It can be taken next. Uh, in the game, there was an option for white to avoid the bishop being exchanged. Uh, we see rook e5, bishop g3, rook d5. And here uh, we see the move c7. So the bishop is supporting that passed pawn. Uh, you might think, is knight e4 possible here? Let's quickly check that. Knight e4, bishop can actually go here. If g5, knight c6, this is actually looking quite nasty. So black's got to be very, very careful here. Uh, we see the move rook d7. So potentially this pawn would be vulnerable if black could get hold of that bishop. And for that reason, if knight e4 is actually useful here now to win that bishop, to weaken the pawn, then perhaps white should consider f3. This is the move 
uh, the engine seems to be liking in this position and it would keep the position uh, balanced really with not much going on uh, unless if she wants to return the sacrifice of the exchange this looks to be as though it's a stable position where it's difficult for black to really exploit being the exchange up so this is this is a move 26 f3 it seems if anything i mean stockfish is giving a slight advantage to white if anything uh if anyone's better here the knight seems nicely centralized the pawn is supported um but we see actually maybe a bit too uh, ambitious a move knight b5 instead and now this is just repulsed actually this knight with a6 if the knight dares to play here then it's actually stranded with c takes stranding the knight so it's giving back the exchange and the knight's stranded so that's no good so the knight actually goes back and now Vichy gets the opportunity to play this knight e4 which will basically weaken this pawn so knight e4 played here where can the bishop go now um, if bishop f4 g5 I think is on the cards now without any punishment really um, if bishop e5 f6 that bishop's going and with that bishop going the c pawn's going to go so yeah knight e4 was funny enough permitted this knight b5 seems a slight mistake so rook c6 the position is now not in balance it seems as though black really could be playing for a win here he takes on g3 and then takes that c pawn so the exchange up but still white has this strong looking knight on d4 so can the black rooks actually do some damage in this position we see check king e2 and actually white doesn't last that long from this position you might think this is looking quite solid uh, so how can Vichy actually get an advantage from here well okay uh, he actually plays rook a8 safeguarding the pawn for a moment as though there's no major uh, vicious intentions behind rook a8 apart from protecting the pawn uh, but actually the rook can be activated along this a file if this pawn is moved and moves again black will get for example a5 as a square to use just something to bear in mind we see the move rook b4 uh, a5 which gives the a6 square now for the rook so the rook is not necessarily passive if it has a6 it can create threats like f6 to target f2 we see rook a4 uh, in this position rook a6 let's have a look rook a6 might might be possible it wasn't played here it doesn't uh, seem that great for white but we see rook b1 instead with the possible idea of rook b4 uh, so that discourages for example you know e4 rook b4 be good to take off the rooks and leave the a pawn hanging uh, so we see now knight b3 this might be final main mistake the evaluation shift is increased dramatically after this move uh, which seems quite logical in some respect to attack a5 but there is an issue for white here as well as the a pawn it's the f pawn which is a problem and we see that actually the game ends suddenly after the check here and if the king goes to the first rank then rook c8 with the idea of doubling rooks and these pawns are in mortal danger and after king f3 though rook a6 is played and with this threat it doesn't matter about the a pawn dropping off here uh, if the knight takes that's just ridiculously losing to the pin but uh, if the rook takes it doesn't fare that well either because of the check here and say king e4 rook f takes here and white's pawns are dropping off if the a pawn moves we take the knight so that the the a2 pawn is invulnerable here is vulnerable here knight c1 black's better here check 
for example rook b4 and with check here black is just much better it doesn't matter about white's a pawn it's not running here the exchange down so yeah after rook a6 white actually resigns this position uh, it's a very, very bad position it seems if king e4 we just can just take on f2 yeah it's not a very pleasant position now let's just have a look though why that valuation shift if the knight had remained uh, on d4 say g4 uh, check if we try and get the same thing here with rook a6 I think white can sidestep things with king g3 to avoid the power of rook f6 uh, you know if rook f6 we can just play f3 or f4 so that would have tried to stabilize the position without f2 becoming vulnerable but in the game yes it was a bit of a disaster playing the move knight b3 uh, when the move knight b3 was played it's a bit of a disaster because of the check hitting f2 getting the king in front of the pawn and there's no time to play f3 here at all in this position the king has to get out of the way with uh, g4 king g3 and f3 but it's no time so rook f6 is a killer threat here so being the exchange up has really counted uh, you might find that surprising that the move rook a8 looks seemingly uh, passive earlier uh, but actually yeah it's it's pretty dangerous just protecting the pawn but also when the pawn moves um, so as soon as the pawn moves it gives a6 which gives this attack route of f6 to f2 what could white do here it's very it's very difficult white has to try and hold the position and arrange a kind of fortress if white had gone for this kind of structure here um, I think it would be uh, more difficult uh, maybe I think white wanted to stop a4 though by playing the rook to a4 so here I mean this this is dangerous as well uh, for different reasons if a3 is played uh, let's just show this for example if a3 is played um, <clears throat> rook a1 yeah so white wanted to, to block this a pawn as quickly as possible with rook b4 and protect block the a pawn and protect a2 so that that was clever but uh, just one imprecision here that's all it took here one slight imprecision that rook b2 for this pawn in knight b3 actually threw away the game I think this is I believe this is the move which Vichy Annan was referring to as the blunder which threw away white's position because otherwise it would have been a very very tough fortress to crack uh, if in those variations with the pawn on f3 and the king on g3 because the knight's so good on d4 if this pawn's blocked and not making any progress and this pawn's difficult to attack yes it looks as though that would be difficult to make progress so a very very interesting game the second win of Vichy and in this tournament so it's looking good for Vichy being in good shape to meet Magnus Carlsen in the upcoming World Chess Championship of 2014 uh, in November okay comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much